This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Lloyd Patterson, and this is CTC Connecting the Community. Everyone agrees that Northwest Florida needs more jobs. Our guests think they think that way too, but they are here to do something about it. Jim Heiser is the recently named president and CEO of the Pensacola Bay Area Chamber of Commerce. He arrived with superstar credentials earned from his six-year stint leading the Bowling Green Kentucky Chamber of Commerce, where his efforts brought 4,000 new jobs to the area. Bentina Terry co-chaired the Chamber's Vision 2015 effort, a plan to attract 3,000 new jobs to this area in the next few years. She works for Gulf Power as Vice President of External Affairs and Corporate Services. And Larry Sassano is President of the Economic Development Council for Okaloosa County. He has years of experience in state, regional, and local development. It's his job to implement the county's plan for attracting new jobs to Okaloosa County. Now, welcome to all of you. It's all about jobs, jobs, jobs. It had to be uh, somewhat of a shock or a disappointment. Uh, Jim Heiser, the, the Air Force tanker contract goes to Seattle, to Wichita, not to nearby Mobile. Well, you're right, Lloyd, but I'll tell you, uh, we're, as we tape this show here in early March, I'm not quite certain that it's over uh, because clearly there are some options that uh, EADS has, uh, for example, they could protest it. Uh, also, decisions like this that are in the political realm uh, have a way of coming back, as we learned before, when this decision or choice had been made previously. So first of all, I'm not certain that, that it's over at this point. But it was clearly a disappointment. Uh, it's a reminder to all of us in Northwest Florida uh, that there are no gifts in the economic development world. Uh, we have to go out and fight for every job we can, we can bring, and nobody's going to hand it to us. And so I think we, I think we move on, whatever, whatever occurs. Obviously, at the end of the day, it would be great if EADS would get that contract, but um, dis disappointment and, and really not all that surprising given the circumstances. Bentina Terry, your reaction to the contract going to Boeing? Of course, it was an extreme disappointment. Um, and I'm one of those people, I always ask myself, what positive can I find from this particular experience that we went through? And the one thing that's uplifting is that oftentimes we forget that we really are a regional area and that working together as a region is something that's very important for our success. And throughout these efforts, Mississippi, Alabama, and this part of Northwest Florida really came together to try to get things accomplished. We may not have reached our ultimate goal, and if it's reconsidered, that's good. If this is where we are, we'll learn to live with it. But what we did learn was that we can work together to make things happen and that it is a regional concept that we really need to keep striving for. And Okaloosa County, Larry Sassano, were you uh, surprised, disappointed? What was your reaction? to? Well, that? I was surprised uh, because we had been hearing EADS, EADS was going to get the uh, award. And like Jim said, that, uh, you know, it's not over. However, we have Boeing in our backyard as well. So uh, it wasn't such a disappointment for us because we feel that Boeing you know, is going to generate some jobs uh, in Oklahoma County as well. Now, Boeing, uh, Northwest, not everybody in Northwest Florida may not realize that Boeing is a major employer in, in uh, Oklahoma County already. That is correct. They have around 600 employees, and uh, we have a close relationship with them as we do with uh, some of the other major prime contractors in the area. So we're, we're glad that they got it. Uh, I think for Northwest Florida, it might be a disappointment, but uh, for us, uh, it's, it's not as big a disappointment, I would say. If you just joined us, you're watching Connecting the Community here on WSRE Public Television. I'm Lloyd Patterson, and our topic tonight, jobs, jobs, jobs. The people with us tonight have been charged with the responsibility of bringing new jobs into this area, and not just a few of them, but 3,000. Is that going to be pretty hard to get to, Jim Heiser? Well, we are projecting right up front 
that 80% of the 3,000 job target, which we've laid out there, 80% of those jobs will come from companies that are already in Northwest Florida. Uh, creating jobs is never easy, and that's why we had to raise the money that we did in order to implement a program to bring the job creation. Uh, we, have a, we have a winning program. I think that our timing is impeccable. Uh, we, are, we are in the early stages of economic recovery here in, in North America, and I think that we're, first of all, going to enjoy some of the fruits of that growth, but then pile on top of that a real effort through Vision 2015. So we're, we're, we're at the early stages of implementing our program, but we are, we're humbled with the private support that we receive from businesses throughout Northwest Florida that, that believe in what we're doing at the Chamber and believe in our job creation targets and want to support that and understand that it benefits their businesses when they support the uh, Vision 2015 initiative. Actually, the community pledged more to this Vision 2015 jobs effort than you were actually expecting to get, Bentina. Our, our goal was to raise $6.5 million um, through our investors, and we raised $7.7 .7 million. And I remember the first time that the consultant who helped us do this set the goals talked to me, and I thought, man, that we can't get there. And I was so pleasantly surprised to see the community say, we can get there, and I'm going to invest as a private company in us getting there and bringing those, those jobs to Pensacola. And it, it's been a tremendous experience asking people. I, I, I don't like to ask people for money, and, uh, but going to see... Um, my colleagues in Pensacola and asking them, will you support this effort, was easy because they were ready to do it. A question for, for all of you I might ask, why does it cost so much money to play in this game of attracting new jobs to this area? Why, why does it cost millions of dollars to do that? Competition is so tough today. Competition you're, with? You're competing against the world. You know, and, and many of the projects that we deal with are, are looking across the world. You know, it's a global economy today. So in order to compete, even to compete with Alabama and Georgia, you know, our neighbors to the north of us, is a difficulty because they throw incentives at these companies that Florida's not traditionally done. So I think with this new governor uh, who's uh, strongly supporting jobs, 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 that he may be able to provide us with some incentives that uh, will more fairly uh, allow us to compete with uh, our neighbors and the rest of the world. Jim Heiser, would that money be used then to, uh, what, bring the company representatives in, show them the town? Uh, what, what, what do you need that kind of money for here in Escambia, Santa Rosa? Well, I can, I can give you a couple of specifics right, right off the bat, Lloyd. One example is that I discovered when I arrived in August that we did not have a staff member who was dedicated to communications and marketing that reported to the president's CEO. Well, the Vision 2015 initiative included the creation of a vice president for marketing and communications, and we now have that position, and we, we filled that position. Another staff position that we did not have in our economic development department but we do now, thanks to Vision 2015, was the creation of an attraction staff person. We did not have a staff person whose job it was to solely go out and seek new investment. Now we do. And uh, Jennifer Ford, who is uh, our deal closer uh, in, in, with the Bowling Green Area Chamber of Commerce, she's, she's moved to Northwest Florida and has filled that position. I can tell you that you know, our economic development website really needs uh, to be rebuilt from the, from the bottom up. And that's, that's going to be at least an eighty dollars to $90,000 project right off the bat. So, you know, we're, we are already, we're already spending that, that, that money that, that Bentina and Jim Donatelli and the cabinet raised for economic development. And uh, we, 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 but we have, it's, uh, as Larry points out, it is not an inexpensive venture to implement a world-class economic development program. I'll give you another perfect example. Uh, in Bowling Green, Kentucky, we had a half a million dollar a year budget that we used for new business attraction. And he, when I arrived in Northwest Florida prior to Vision 2015, the Pensacola Bay Area Chamber had a, a new, business, new business attraction budget of around $70,000, $75,000 a year. So I moved from a community 
that is a, less than a third the size of metropolitan Pensacola, and my new business attraction budget was, was less than one-fifth of what we had in, in Kentucky. That, and when Larry mentions the, the, the competition, that's what the competition's doing. The competition's sinking big-time resources in, especially now with the economy the way it is, creating one job is a big deal. It's a much bigger deal than it was just three or four years ago when the economy was moving along pretty pretty nicely. Is there a calculation that you have that say it costs you $20,000 in your out of your budget to create one new job? Is there such a formula? No. No, what what every every uh, job, every company, every prospect is different. Some have greater needs than others. So the dollar amount has to go for you look at a big pool of dollars and, and, and you effectively try to use those dollars to attract the type of companies that you're targeting. And it may cost more to do uh, some types of industries that and it may require international travel. So that those dollars have to be applied to that. But I, I'd like to go back just for a second. And uh, Jim said something about 80% of the jobs are created from existing companies. Yes, we put a lot of effort in recruiting, but you know, the, the uh, companies that are here, we spend a lot of time in our retention effort as well because they're creating the bulk of the jobs. So if we have unhappy companies in our backyard and new companies coming and looking at our area and they're talking to those companies, if they don't get a good impression, they're not going to come here. So we've got to take care of what we have in our backyard first before we are effectively can recruit new companies to the area. I, I've always pictured it as a, your, your efforts being directed toward that one big home run company that will come in and create those 3,000 jobs. But that's not the way you're thinking, is it, Bettina? No, no, you really, it's working on, like the, the both gentlemen have said, it's working on the businesses that are here, helping to keep them happy, helping them expand their businesses, as well as recruiting new business. So it's entrepreneurship that you're working on, because there are people that are already here in our community. They may be working for someone else. Maybe it's time for them to venture out and become an employer themselves. There's a lot of work that we do around in the economic development space around all the different types of businesses you have, no matter where they are in their chain, whether or not it's a big business that needs to get bigger, or a small business that needs to get bigger, or a new business that needs to crop up. But it's, it's going to take all of that work to get it done. This is WSRE's Connecting the Community. Lloyd Patterson here talking this evening about the jobs creation effort. There's a big program underway in Northwest Florida to bring more jobs, thousands of jobs, into uh, the region. And uh, I guess I'm getting the impression it's not a matter anymore of just sending out a brochure with a picture of the beach on it and saying, bring your business. You could be living here. Bring your business here. It's not that simple anymore. No, it's, yeah. no it's not at all. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, uh, and again, Larry's, Larry's exactly right when he talks about it starts with our existing companies. But it, we, we all recognize that it generates excitement within the community when you have com new companies moving in. That, the, 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 those are the announcements that generate the front page headlines. But you know, when, when you're, what we have to do here in Northwest Florida is we have to raise our visibility as an economic development player with the folks that are making decisions regarding investment. One of the things that I discovered as I was investigating this opportunity is that Northwest Florida, by the professional site selector community, and the professional site selectors are the consultants, independent consultants who get hired by Fortune 500 companies and other companies to make their help them find sites for expansions or new locations. The professional site selector community really uh, Northwest Florida is low on their list of project of, of communities that they consider. Because why is it why is it low on their list? Because Northwest Florida, in their eyes, has never been a serious player in the economic development game. Uh, I just just can quote one uh, one particular professional site selector from the New York, New Jersey area that I spoke with when I was con again considering this opportunity. He said, "Jim, the folks from Northwest Florida, they never come to see me. Uh, they've never invited me down to look around at the sites." Uh, he said, I, I know that Mobile is a player, I know that Jacksonville is a player, I know that Montgomery is a player, 
but I've always just made the assumption that, that Pensacola wasn't serious about economic development. And so we have to change that on the attraction front. We have to make sure that they are comfortable, that we now have the resources. We're going to go see them. We're going to invite them to, to come see us. And that's, that's really important. That's a really important uh, strategy through our Vision 2015 initiative. Well, these site selectors are, play, a, play a huge role then, don't they? They can eliminate you right off the bat. They're very important in what Jim says about having those relationships. That's why having someone like Jim Heiser who has those contacts is so incredibly important. And one of the things that Florida as a state has done over time is we used to be an expensive, a cheap place to live. Now Florida is the 19th most expensive state in the nation. And when you're talking about where you need to move your business, you can no longer say, we're beautiful, please come here. We're cheap, well, we're not cheap anymore please come here. You've got to really find ways to attract people here that are much more dynamic than that. And everybody wants to go someplace where they feel like they're wanted. I mean, when you get down to it, it's about basic human principles. And we're talking about moving companies, but we're talking about people making decisions. And by us going to visit them, letting them know we're open, having them come down and see, yes, we're beautiful, and we want you to be a part of our community, you're more likely to get those folks here. You doing the same thing? Absolutely. You know, the, um, I really applaud what Pensacola has done because they are becoming a player. And that's important for this region because they're like our big brother, you know, because they're the largest uh, county in northwest Florida. So we look up to them because they have the ability to attract companies because companies that look at Pensacola are going to look at Okaloosa County as well. And, you know, um, in the targeting efforts that we put forth, we used to target industries or industry sectors. We still do that. But now we target the talent that those companies require for them to make that relocation. So the talent has become equally as important as the company that we're trying to target. The, the uh, software engineers, the, what kind of talent are we talking about? Well, here? let's take Okaloosa County. Uh, there's a shortage of mechanics because we have a lot of manufacturing because of our defense contractors. I've talked to com some companies this week, and they have to recruit mechanics from the Midwest. They can't get them anywhere else. Now, we need programs that can train mechanics and get people interested in knowing that mechanics are high paying jobs and they're in demand. But until we can get that message out to the individuals that need the training to attract them to the companies that need their services, that's the task that we have in front of us. So I think that it's, it's important that we look at the type of the caliber of the individuals that we need in our backyard as we are trying to recruit industries to our area as well. Do you see this as a Northwest Florida being a separate uh, entity? So if Okaloosa gets a big, big uh, contract, gets a big employer, it isn't. You don't see it as a loss for Santa Rosa Scambi. Is it a zero sum thing? In other words, the, 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 yeah. Lloyd, the, the the dollars do not stop at the county line. Right. And if what's interesting is that we're right next to Alabama. Uh, when Alabama prospers and, and the tanker project we talked about a moment ago is a perfect example. That tanker, those 1,500 jobs, those, the, the, those jobs had landed or will land in Mobile and then all the suppliers where you're talking about another 4,000 or 5,000 jobs from suppliers also landing within an hour of Mobile. That has a tremendous impact on all of Northwest Florida and South Alabama and Southern, Southern Mississippi. So that's, that's one thing we have to understand is that the dollars do not stop at the, at the, the county line or the state line. I had, had a conversation just the other day about the, the people that the Army is, uh, is moving to Eglin, uh, right. the, the, to, to their special forces realignment. And you know some of those folks are going to live in the Pensacola metropolitan area, no doubt about it. And, and spend their money in the Pensacola metropolitan area. Even the folks who don't necessarily locate in Pensacola metropolitan area will spend some of their money in the Pensacola metropolitan area or they'll spend their money with someone who will spend their money in the Pensacola metropolitan area. So we, 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 uh, we, we cannot uh, achieve our objectives in Northwest Florida by thinking that the dollars stop at the county line or the state line. You, so you're not in competition with Okaloosa County, with Tallahassee? Oh, yes, know. we are. We're, we're all in competition. But this is a very interesting region. And, you know, I, I've, I've been in this business too long. But I've watched other regions of the state, and they compete with each other. 
and this area does compete, but they work together. It's a good partnership here. And Jim's absolutely right. You know, when the seven special forces builds up, those individuals, they don't have to live right there by Duke Field there. They could live anywhere, and they'll spend their money throughout the region. It has a regional impact, and large companies or lar large initiatives like this do impact the entire region. Well, you, when you think about it, too, I'm going to give you a, a employer's perspective. Of course, Gulf Power is a regional company, so sure. anywhere in this region um, really, really is good for us. But when we're bringing people to northwest Florida to come work in Pensacola or Gulf Breeze or Destin, we have them look at the whole area because, like Jim said, they're going to decide where they live. It may be 15 minutes from their office. It may be 45 minutes from their office. They're going to have to decide where their kids are going to go to school. They're have to going to decide where they're going to go shopping. And so if you're an employer, you market the region. You really want your employees to think about all the opportunities that are available in that broad spectrum of areas. And so when companies are coming here, yeah, they want to talk to Jim and yeah, they want to talk to Larry, but what they really want to talk about is what are you doing in Northwest Florida to make this someplace where I want to bring my business? And yeah, I'll have to pick a site in one of these counties, but my employees are going to benefit from the whole spectrum that's in that area. Right, you feel like it's a win no matter where. That's why you were so positive about the uh, Boeing contract, well, the EAD uh, getting the uh, getting the Air Force contract because it would have spilled over here somehow. Yeah. Yeah, Mobile has, you mentioned a moment ago that people, yeah, the site selectors are aware of Mobile. Uh, they've, they've been a, a successful in attracting a number of uh, big, big, well-paying companies. Uh, does that, uh, is that troublesome to you that as you look at this area that Mobile has been so successful where uh, Northwest Florida has not been? We well, you know, Lloyd, I think that uh, the, way, the way you need to put this in perspective is that 30 years ago, Mobile took some very serious steps to get become e uh, economic development players on the world stage. They raised, that was the very first capital campaign, their, their version of Vision 2015, they raised uh, private sector and public sector money to put together a world-class economic development effort. They invested, reinvested in their port, and they created shovel-ready business industrial sites uh, in, in, the, uh, in the Mobile area. So 30 years ago, they took some of the same steps that we're taking now. Uh, you know, the way I look at this is that from, from the Pensacola metropolitan area standpoint, it, it's not like we've been taking the steps that Mobile's taken and we just haven't had success. It, it, this Vision 2015 is a milestone. This marks Pensacola's emergence as a world-class economic development organization. And, you know, we probably could devote a whole show to some of the reasons why Pensacola has not gotten that has not gotten that serious about economic development programming and making these these types of investments until now it probably doesn't matter the fact is that now that we're making we're making these moves and we are going to see the same kind of success in job creation the mobile scene you know for folks who've lived in northwest florida for 30 years, they will remember that 30 years ago, Mobile and Pensacola were roughly the same size, with roughly the same economic output. Now, of course, Mobile's population has grown faster than Pensacola's, and their and the economic output for the Mobile metropolitan area also exceeds Pensacola's. They they made some key investments in economic development; has paid off for them, as it will for us. All right, Bentina. I, I mean, I, I agree with Jim. I mean, it's it's all about commitment, and Pensacola is committed to it now, and you, you really can't decide to play on that stage unless you're going to do it seriously. So I'm very, very, very positive. I think that Pensacola is at a tipping point, or the Pensacola Bay Area is really at a tipping point. I think that people are, are interested in something happening. The economy has something to do with that, but I think there's also just a feeling that we can do better mm -hmm. and we have the potential. It is beautiful. I've lived in about five or six different cities, and this is by far the most beautiful place I've ever lived with one of the best quality of lives I've ever enjoyed. And, and Pensacola can continue to offer that, but doing it in a more strategic way so that we can continue to bring people here. Well, if people like you feel that way and communicate that to your uh, to uh, uh, site selectors uh, around that that makes it that should make it a little easier. We live in an international economy now, 
Are you, is there any effort being made to uh, draw companies from outside the borders of the United States? Absolutely. Yeah. Are there site selectors from uh, Berlin or, the, or well, London? Well, we have uh, Enterprise Florida has uh, several inter international offices. I, I think that uh, some of those representatives uh, come visit uh, Florida and Northwest Florida to talk to us about some of the potential uh, prospects that they may have that may be interested in visiting our area. Uh, in uh, June, we have the Paris Air Show coming up, and uh, that's a uh, effort that uh, happens every other year. Farm Bureau happens, uh, you know, in the alternate years. But those international shows targeting aviation, aerospace, and defense, which is prevalent in our region, are very popular, and we generally have a very strong turnout from Florida uh, to those shows. And Enterprise Florida, is, which is the statewide public-private partnership that does economic development, they just named, actually, the governor just named a new... Um, chair or president or, or chairman of Enterprise Florida, or CEO, I think is his, his appropriate title. Mm -hmm. But they really do a great job of connecting those folks. So, for instance, there was some, there was a Spanish contingency that wanted to talk about moving a renewable energy company to northwest Florida. Well, they come talk to us at Gulf Power so that they can figure out whether or not we can have a relationship with them, as well as with the chamber about where a possible site might be. But they do a great job of helping make those connections because it's such a big world and Florida is such a big state that we need a little facilitation in some of those relationships. Can Only a couple I, of minutes I, left. Something yeah, or, quickly. Yeah, I just want to say before our show ends that Gulf Power has been a player uh, ever since I've been in this business. And you have several power companies you know, around the state of Florida that have been in and out of economic development. They have always remained in economic development and have been supporters. That is a big part of what we do also. Their help uh, is invaluable. And I, and I know that you deal in things where you can't divulge to the, uh, to, to the media what it is a certain company is looking at the area, you're encouraged about it. So that has to be tough, to, tough on you to try to keep that secret. Here you are talking to big companies and something, something fantastic. Why don't you just let us know right now what you're working on <laughs> and what might, okay, no, it, I, I don't blame you. I understand you can't, but I'd like to say, Jim Heiser, thank you very much for uh, being on, connecting the community. Uh, here are nothing but good things about you, and uh, uh, really hope that you and Bentina succeed, of course, in getting those thousands. Good for everybody. And same for Okaloosa County, growing like crazy. Thank you. And congratulations on your work. Uh, thank you very much for being with us today here on WSRE, PBS for the Gulf Coast. I'm Lloyd Patterson. Thanks for watching.